Hello, I'm Maria Barantini, Pastoral Associate of Children's Catechesis at Prince of Peace. As a kid, it's hard to wait. It's hard to wait in anticipation of Easter morning, Christmas morning, or your birthday. You just want to get to that day quicker. You get a funny feeling in the pit of your stomach as you wait, or at least I know I used to. I remember a holy Saturday and Christmas Eve always being so long. It was so hard to wait. I remember sitting in my bed when I was a kid and just waiting for the day to end to get to the excitement quicker. But that waiting teaches us something. It helps us understand the feeling of hope. Today is Holy Saturday. Holy Saturday is all about that feeling of waiting and excited anticipation. We wait in stillness and hope for Christ's resurrection. Christ's cross stands empty as the world waits in silence for our Lord. In the silence of Holy Saturday, there is hope in the darkness. Hope filled Mary's heart as she waited for Jesus to rise from the dead, just as he said he would. She waited patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled just as we wait right now. On Holy Saturday, we are reminded not to place our hope in earthly things, and instead, we must place our hope in Jesus Christ. I wanna to talk to you about the virtue of hope. There are three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love, and we're gonna just talk about the virtue of hope right now. Hope is not the same as optimism. When you say, I hope I'll get that bike, or I hope I'll get that new toy. That's not the same as the theological virtue of hope. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 1817 says, Hope is the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness, placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. Hope is the virtue by which we trust God, will fulfill his promises, and look forward to eternal life. We have hope in God, which leads us to view eternal life as our most important goal, and to place our total trust in God. The Baltimore Catechism puts it this way. It describes hope as trust in God, and it says, hope says, I trust that God will help me get to heaven because he is able and has promised to do so no matter how impossible it seems because of my own weakness. Hope is living with our goal of heaven in mind. When you're a kid, it can be tough sometimes to see how life fits together, but there is no doubt that God made you and God wants you to be happy. We can lose hope sometimes, but if we remember to do this one thing when we feel like we've lost hope, I'm gonna tell you that secret. When you turn to your Bible, it can give you guidance. So I want you to explore hope in the Bible. Did you know the word hope appears in the Bible approximately 130 times? I want you to look at two different parables of Jesus today. I want you to find in your Bibles at home, Luke chapter 15, verse one through seven. And this is the parable of the lost sheep. And then I also want you to look at Luke 15, verse 11 through 32, which is the story of the prodigal son. I want you to find those in your Bibles. Again, it's Luke 15 verses 1 through 7 and then Luke 15 verses 11 through 32. I want you to read those stories sometime today. I want you to see that Jesus told us about forgiveness in these stories and in that forgiveness we see that there is hope for all of us. Hope means trusting God is part of your life and my life no matter how your life changes, no matter how bad life can seem, God is still with us, and that means we can still find hope no matter what, no matter our circumstances. When we have hope, 
We're trusting in God's promises. God is everywhere and with us in every moment, even the discouraging ones, the sad ones, everything you're feeling right now, God is with you. I want you to remember that God is with you and that feeling of hope. He gives us hope. You should always have hope in our Lord. Waiting is hard. I know it is, but we wait in hope right now on Holy Saturday. We wait in hope of Christ's resurrection and we wait in hope to return to our churches and schools together. Take advantage of this day of waiting. Read your Bible. Look at those passages of hope in your Bible. Look at those two parables I suggested. Draw closer to God in this time we are waiting. Even you, as a kid, can learn about hope today. You can read your Bible. I know you can. For my sixth graders through eighth grades to high schoolers, I want you to get out this Bible that looks like this or the one that has the blue cover. And I want you to find in the back, there's a life and faith issues. And it has a list of passages of hope in here. And I want you to find that and read that. Give yourself hope in God's word. I also want you to know that they don't all look the same. And whatever Bible you have at home, you may have one of those indexes. For example, this one is really long and it has a subject index. And in this subject index, you can find the words that you're looking for, for encouragement. I want you to find those things, especially if you need hope right now. Even you as a kid can learn about hope today. We can renew our desire to draw closer to God in this time of waiting. And we can draw closer to God by reading our Bibles. It's a long Holy Saturday right now, but that waiting is going to lead us to Easter joy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen our hope in times of darkness and to help us be a source of hope for others. And I know you kids are hope for your parents right now. Saint Pope John Paul II said, do not abandon yourself to despair. We are the Easter people and hallelujah is our song. Remember kids, Easter is coming. We just need to wait in hope for it to arrive.